Sometimes there's nothing more enjoyable than a good board game, even if it's played on the television. We've had video board games before, from adaptations to Pictionary to games like Clue, but let's talk about one of my favorites. Fortune Street, released for the Wii in 2011, is kind of like an adventure investment board game, featuring characters from the Super Mario and Dragon Quest universes. You may be inclined to think of Fortune Street as a Mario Party style game if you're glancing at it right here, but you'd actually be pretty far off. Think of it more as Nintendo and Dragon Quest characters actually playing a real board game. Players go around the board, buying up lots to set up shops. If someone lands on a the shop, they must pay the owner the price indicated on that space. I know it sounds an awful lot like Monopoly, but it's actually a good bit more complicated than that, and not in a bad way. There are two sets of rules you can choose from, easy rules which allow inexperienced or new players an easy way to get into the game, or standard rules which feature districts and a stock market of sorts. Both are fun and actually rather simple to pick up and enjoy, but the easy rules are definitely far more accessible. The goal of Fortune Street is basically the American dream, it's to become the richest person around by buying up shops and investing in them all while trying to avoid spending money at other players' shops. Each player starts with a certain amount of ready cash and net worth. To win, you must raise your net worth to the gold amount, then return to the bank to win. Net worth is raised by using your ready cash to buy shops, and when players land on the shops that you've bought, they'll buy things from there, increasing your net worth as well. Landing on your own shops will allow you to invest in any shop that you currently own. That increases its value and price. This allows you to really squeeze the coins out of other players, and that is the key to winning. There's a couple ways you can turn the tides in Fortune Street as well. Go around the board and collect the four suits and return to the bank for a promotion. Every time you do so, your pay packet increases. This all goes to your ready cash and your net worth. And if you do so enough times, you eventually start making some serious money. So does it sound like Monopoly yet? It does, I'll admit that, but Fortune Street does a good bit different to separate itself from the classic board game. For starters, there's the districts and stock market in the standard rules, where buying shops in districts is essential to raising their value and the value of invested stock. One of the big selling points, though, might just be the charm of the game. Fortune Street uses both Dragon Quest and Super Mario characters, boards, and music to create a colorful game that has some real charm to it. Every character has a funny, pun-filled thing to say during their turn, and sometimes they'll insult the player character or even encourage them to do their best. The boards themselves sometimes have gimmicks from the games they represent as well, such as warp gates from Dragon Quest or warp pipes from Mario to transport characters to the other side of the board. The board layouts range from the small in scale to the massive and linear, allowing many different strategies and approaches to be used in any game of Fortune Street. But one of my favorite aspects of the presentation has got to be the music. All the music in the game comes from games in both series, and since this game is made by Square Enix and on a Nintendo platform, we get to hear this tune again. The presentation of this game is spot on. All the characters have personality and are fun, and if you're playing alone, this helps give the feeling of good-natured competition when the computer-controlled players are around, even if their quips are so pun-filled it hurts sometimes. Like most board games of this nature, Fortune Street takes a long time to play. I had a round last an hour before, and I've had a round last three hours before. But you are given the option to have the computer make actions for you, or to save your progress and come back at a later time, which I take major advantage of. Players are also allowed a certain level of customization with their Mii character that is used in single player games. You can buy them clothes, poses, actions, and accessories with stamps earned from one games in Fortune Street's tour mode. Personally, the Blue Rider's Jacket is my favorite, as you can see here. This is a fun addition to the game and allows you to really give your me some charm. Fortune Street can be a little complicated if you're not into board games like Monopoly, but if you're willing to invest some time into a charming, colorful, and fun video board game, then Fortune Street is a place worth visiting.